Well, it sounds like I can tell that a lot of people are excited for this particular show. So a f- just a, a few minutes, um, I'm going to be bring uh, Brennan and Morgan on here. I'll let you guys know our connection when we have them on here. But just so you know, uh, the theme tonight is going to be on the reality of sex trafficking. I think many of us have a heart for this, uh, especially in the last, it seems as last month, two months, it seems like it's circulated a lot. There have been a lot of different um, outreaches, a lot of different awareness campaigns out there. I think more people are getting educated probably because of being home a lot. We see a lot of our news is on social media. And so we're getting educated with the reality of sex trafficking. Um, myself and Ryan Reese have done many shows over the last few years. Um, I've mentioned it multiple times in the last couple months, uh, and I've been telling Ryan too, the Opal Singleton, when we uh, interviewed her at the end of 2019, that show just, it hasn't left me. It was one of those shows that me and Ryan didn't really have to say much. Um, I believe we chimed in just a few minutes throughout both of those shows because she had so much to say. Um, And watching what's taking place in 2020, we've seen so many things um, come to pass in a lot of ways. So such as um, the social media aspect uh, for the teenage kids, how they can get ensnared through social media. If you were there um, when Opal spoke at Calvary Chapel Golden Springs, you're aware of some of the things that she brought forth. Uh, I believe the year prior, we had Clay uh, Crawford that was there as well, and he is a guy that works for the Sheriff's Department as well and told a lot of interesting stories. Um, and so that's why I wanted to have this, the show, to be able to talk about these issues on just a very practical sense. I know that many that are tuning in right now, some of you are moms, you have young children, your, your fathers, you have children. Maybe you don't have children at all. Maybe you're single and you just have a heart for this, this world. Um, and I will say this, all the way back to the beginning of the Whosoever's with Annie Lobert um, and for her ministry in Vegas, ministering to girls that are coming out of prostitution and her whole story. I think everything has just escalated in our ministry of seeing this reality. Um, whether and you know that may be some you know older girls and when I say older I'm talking like in their 20s um, but also in those teenage years she uh, Annie would tell many stories also her friend Sammy Summers has a, a lot of um, influence as well in Vegas and so it seems like we've always had this um, knowledge uh, as of late in, in many years um, I think um, With social media, it has given us the ability to communicate a lot. So I hope that this show tonight is going to bless you. And so in just a minute, as they come on, I'm ready for Brendan when he he comes through. Um, Brendan Beeler, me and him have known each other for many years now. And so many of you know Brendan, know Morgan. And so I believe this is going to be a great show. Let me see who else is there. Tracy. Nice. A lot of people are, are tuning in right now. Vanessa, Amy, Laker, Danielle, Jerry. What's up? What's up? Very, very cool. Before... We, yeah, okay, here comes Brennan right now. Brennan is on. Brennan, when you're ready, go ahead and request to come through. Boom. And Brandon's just about to come through right now. Hey, What's up? Hey, Sean. What's up? How you guys doing? Good. How are you? Ah. I'm doing well. Hey, technical difficulties. Hey, we had this set up for like an hour and now it's falling apart. I know. Me too. We don't have all of our guys helping us at this time, Brandon. Yeah. Yeah, we're <laughs> hopeless without our guys. <laughs> Well, you know, before we get started into like this interview thing, let, let me just uh, bring everybody up to speed of our connection. Many people know already, but as our uh, our um, followers are kind of like merging together right now, uh, me and Brennan have known each other for many years now. It's a trip that has gone by so quick. Yeah. Um, Brennan was uh, served at Cary Chapel Costa Mesa for many years, him and his brother. 
Garrett Beeler under Chuck Smith, and our ministries connected. When Ryan came to the Lord, I'd already been in the ministry for a couple of years, uh, but Brennan was in a band, The House. He was an amazing drummer. Are you, can you still drum or what? I, I have a couple of times, actually. Uh, <laughs> one time our drummer uh, got sick the morning of on a Sunday morning. And, uh, and so I, uh, I was like, hey, we don't have a drummer this morning. I just, I filled in. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm an on-call drummer, but I don't like to drum as much as I used to. I used to feel so, like, uncomfortable being on stage just with a Bible and a microphone. I needed to be behind my drum set. I felt more comfortable. Yeah. Now, just put a Bible and a mic in my hand, and I'm good. But behind a drum set, I'm, like, completely in an uncomfortable <laughs> position now. So, like, for that band, and that band, the house and you, and that connection was something that was very big at Calvary Chapel Golden Springs. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of history. A lot of people were ministered to you during those Sunday evenings uh, of you guys being there. And many know that you came on staff after that time, as that transition was ending um, in music. And mm -hmm. you came on and being on staff at Calvary Chapel Golden Springs with Raul and our yeah. staff and all the guys. Um, took over the high school ministry, began to teach a lot, um, and were there. How long, how long were you there, Brennan? About two and a half years. About two and a half years. It's um, about halfway into teaching at the gig when I had the opportunity to start teaching on Sunday nights. Yes. I think I did like about a 10-month period of time. About halfway into that, that's when Raul asked me to pray about going out and planning a church. Yeah. And, um, and you know, we, we never thought we would leave. You know, in a lot of ways, uh, we thought maybe one day, but, you know, we, we were just getting settled. But then we started <laughs> we started to pray about it, and the Lord started opening the floodgates and confirming it in so many different ways. We knew the Lord was completely in it yeah. without telling the whole church planning story. Um, you know, I finished out teaching through the Book of Romans into the end of 2010, and then 2000, beginning of 2011 is when we planted a Bible study and then started regenerate church in uh end of august we're actually celebrating nine years this sunday I'm sure. time goes by quick yeah so we've known each other probably for about 14 years now i'm 43 years old man <laughs> you were way younger when i first met you <laughs> <laughs> um and through that obviously that's how i've met morgan over the years and i think um with morgan and everybody that knows morgan our wives you know i've always loved you morgan always respected you um, you, you have that genuine aspect of ministry. Um, I've never sat in a woman's ministry uh, teaching, but I hear you're pretty amazing. Um, Sean, you got to watch think, online. That's how you sneak in. That's, that's how you sneak into huh? women's events. I always watch all of her teachings online. I sneak into all the pastor's wives' conference. And so for that, you know, um, both of you, when you do ministry as a pastor, we all know how important it is to have a spouse with us going in the same direction and Morgan, you have a heart for ministry. And now you guys have how many children? Three. Three. Yeah. Three. Three children. Uh, two boys and a girl? Yeah. Two boys and a girl. Um, about a few weeks ago, Morgan, I saw you uh, do a post. And you were sharing just about of an encounter that you had. And that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to do this this yeah. evening. Um, and I saw it because I follow you and I see some of the things you post. I see the things of the family and stuff. Uh, but what you posted that night, um, it hit me, you know, yeah. and I, I hit Brendan on the side too, um, just to let him know that kind of praying as well. And yeah. I think it was like at the same time where so many things have been circulating uh, with sex trafficking, with human trafficking, with kidnapping, and then seeing this and me and Brenda have been talking about doing one of these Instagram lives throughout this whole COVID thing. Yeah. Um, but thought that this would be a, an interesting time. And so, Morgan, I, I know, thank you for, for doing this. Um, Absolutely. You know, me and Brendan talked to you, you know, when it first happened, to just kind of, kind of give it some time so you can kind of work through the emotions and, and get to the place where, because this is very, it's like vulnerable too. Yeah. Um, and so as we go through this this evening, Morgan, we'll go as much as you want to, and we'll pull back. Um, we'll just go with your flow. Thank um, you. So let, let's just get into the story, actually, you know, okay. because this is what impacts a lot, because us being pastors, we're busy a lot, you know, um, you being a mom and having three children, going to the stores, you know, going different places can be challenging, but to necessity. Um, so why don't you just go through the what happened to you this particular day or evening? Okay, so it was um, a Monday a few weeks ago, 
and that third day off and um we Brennan was gonna go do something and I was just gonna run an errand real quick we we're gonna meet back up and I always take my kids to Target probably twice a week so like every mom <laughs> like yeah. every mom uh, it's very normal occurrence for me to be there and I go to the same Target every time in Costa Mesa and Harbor Boulevard and so um I was there one day, it was the week before my son was turning seven. And so I told them if they're really good, that we'll go to the toy aisle and he can, you know, look at some toys and let me know what he'd like for his birthday. Yeah. And so we went through the store, did our grocery shopping and got all the things that we needed. And I said, okay, you guys, let's go to um, the toy aisle. So we start walking over there. Well. Um, when we first get over there, I just kind of noticed this guy, like, kind of lingering in the toy aisle. And um, he just kind of made me feel uncomfortable. Um, but as you, everyone knows, everyone wears masks right now. And so I kind of just discounted that feeling of, um, oh, he's giving me the creeps to just, okay, he's wearing a mask just like everyone else. Just let's go in the toy aisle and see what um, our son wants. And so um, I just couldn't, I, I wanted to shake that feeling, but I just couldn't shake that feeling. And it, and it bothered me that I couldn't see his face. Um, and, and some things started to really stand out to me. Um, one, he was by himself. Two, he didn't have anything pertaining to groceries in his hands. Three, he didn't have a grocery cart. Mm -hmm. um, so I just was like, what's this guy doing in the toy aisle at Target? And then I just kind of was vacillating like thoughts within my head. Okay, maybe his, he's a dad. His, he doesn't want his kids here. Maybe he's looking for, you know, a toy or whatever. Yeah. So as time goes on, I, I'm just, I'm a lot, I got all my kids out. They're all looking at the toys and everything. And like you said, I have three kids and they kind of go in three different directions, right. especially in a toy section. Uh -huh. um, they all are different ages, so they gravitate towards different toys. Yeah. They're, um, they're really young, too. You yeah. Know, and so I could see them, but I mean, they're not like where I could just grab them. Right. Um, so all that to say, I started noticing that he was following me and he kept looking at my kids. And so I just like was like, okay, maybe he just thinks they're good looking. I don't know. Maybe he's, yeah. I don't know. He's a weirdo. I don't know. But I just was, I, I wasn't uncomfortable yet. I just kept my eye on him. And then I started noticing that he was like canvassing me kind of in a half circle. Mm -hmm. uh, he would go on one side of an aisle and like look at us and he'd go on the other side of another aisle and like look at us. Now looking back at it, I, I realized he was pushing me back. To where he wanted me to be um which was at the double exit doors in the very back of the store um with the toys so um it was at that moment i was at the very back with our grocery cart all of our groceries i have a kid on one side of my cart and two kids on the other side of the cart and he approached me at that moment when i was at those double exit doors Mm -hmm. At that point, I knew I had to say something because I was, I literally was like, oh my goodness, he's, he's going to take my kids or he's going to hurt me or do mm -hmm. something. And so I, I just looked at each of my kids and I said, you guys, this man is making mommy very uncomfortable. I need you to come to mommy right now. And like I said in that post, it was only by the grace and faithfulness and goodness of God that my kids actually listened the first time in a, yeah. in a toy aisle. Hard. Like, it's they an don't impossibility live, sometimes. I'm, yeah. Like, our, I mean, obviously, <laughs> as, as parents, you want your kids to listen and you want to be like, yeah, my kids listen the first time every time. Well, in yeah. a toy aisle, I'll just be straight. They don't ever listen. <laughs> um, exactly. But he, on it, they, like, it, honestly, it was, it was God's provision watching over us. And, and he, both, all of my kids, I don't know if it was the tone, tone in my voice or whatever it may be, they all noticed and they all came to me immediately. Um, I, my three-year-old wants to be like my older two. He never wants to sit down in the cart. Uh, he's a boy. He, he's crazy. He just runs around. Right. He's, he's I got a couple of those. So I literally... 
yeah, you got a couple of those, three of them, right? So I, I just yeah. picked him up and I sat him in the front part of the car and I was just like praying that there'd be no fight because he literally fights me every single time. And so he, he sat down, no complaints. I grabbed my daughter, put her in the big part of the car. I grabbed my oldest son and I said, you hold on to mommy's hand as, as hard and tight as you can. And whatever you do, you don't let go. And he said, okay. And when I had said that, um, this man is making me feel uncomfortable. I don't know if he heard me. Like, I don't know if I was loud enough. I wish I was, I wish I would have just full on uh, approached him and just like, let him know, oh, like, confronted. Yeah, yeah, confronted him. Like, Hey, like, mm -hmm. I know what you're doing. You need to stop. Yeah. But I just, I've more pointed it towards my kids, but then he knew that I knew what was about to take place. So he, he turned around, but I just kept my, um, my eye on him. And I, I don't know why, but I looked at his hands and he had three cell phones. Wow. And I remember that very vividly. Um, it just stood out to me and it really like bothered me. Um, right. So I, as I said, I grabbed my kids and we walked, I knew as long. Oh, and by the way, this is at 1130 in the morning on a Monday. Hmm. Um, and I was all alone. Like there was no one around. And this is the middle of the day. And yeah. so I knew I had to get to that middle aisle, um, you know, where I knew more people would be. And so I just, I, I got there as quickly as I could. I looked behind me to see where he was. I saw him and he met up with another guy. Wow. Um, at that point, I just, I just kept looking and I walked away. Um, he didn't follow me. Uh, so at that point, I just, I, I knew I just wanted to get out. I actually was like, well, I'm just going to get to the front. Yeah. And I saw that there is a person in front of me, a person behind me. And I kept looking both ways. Um, and I was able to check out. I parked in the very front of the store. I knew it was broad daylight that I would be fine, um, walking out as long as he wasn't following me at that mm -hmm. time. I didn't say anything to anybody. Um, like I wish that I would have. Yeah. Um, but I got to my car, I put them all inside one door, um, got them all in, locked them in, got in the car, thank God that nothing happened, went home, told Brennan, and um, I was fine because I was home. Yeah. Um, my kids were home, and it didn't really bother me until, um, I mean, it bothered me while it was happening, but it didn't hit me. Um, like what actually took place um, about four days later. So that <laughs> Friday, like it was really, really hard for me that day. Um, yeah. So uh, we ended up calling Target Security and Brennan went in and talked to them and let them know like the situation. And I had to write a full report of what happened. And, you know, nothing happened by the grace of God. Um, he was faithful and he protected us. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically yeah. what happened. Yeah. One of the reasons why we want to share this story too, Sean, is because we've learned so much yeah. of what's going on in our local community since this has happened. Yeah. It, it was really an eye opener for our family. Mm -hmm. um, also to replay like, okay, what, what should we do? Like, because when you're taken by surprise and you know, you're almost in shock because you can't believe that it's happening to you. You know, you don't play through those scenarios in your head oftentimes just as a mom going to the store. Okay, if this was to happen to me, what would I do? Mm -hmm. You know, and and also I think a lot of people can just not really understand or kind of be naive to what's really happening. And so we, we're really thankful to you to host something like this because we, we talked about it, we prayed about it. And one of the main reasons why we wanted to share this story is because if it can help protect somebody else, maybe watching right now, or a friend of a friend that ends up seeing this, or someone shares it. Um, if, if someone watches this and is able to, you know, confront that person, you know, stay away, make a, lo you know, a loud scene like you're supposed to, and, you know, start yelling at a person, you know, or whatever, and, you, know, make, you know, making that person feel more uncomfortable. No. Um, you know, this guy was shadowing Morgan through the store. And when Morgan shared this story um, on, on her Instagram, just uh, in, you know, her little Instagram story write up, she uh we had several people reach out to her and um and then one of the people that reached out to me was uh the director of SWAT 
um, of a certain county, I won't say, here locally in Southern California. And he reached out to me and he asked me a few questions, uh, but not so much as an investigation, but more if we were okay and what was going on. And he, she shared that there's so much happening right now because these criminals are being emboldened because they wear a hat, yeah. a mask, and sunglasses. Their face is completely guarded, un unable to be identified. And so they're much more brazen and willing to commit crimes in mm -hmm. broad daylight. Yeah. Uh, the second thing that's happening right now is a lot of people don't know is um, California is the number one state for traffic children in the United States. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. Anaheim, which is right in between us, um, is the number one city for traffic children mm -hmm. in the country. Um, so that makes Orange County the number one county for trafficked children, and that's the county that we live in. Hmm. Um, and with that, it's been the number one county or, or city, Anaheim, for, for several years now, almost for a decade. And it's mainly because of the corridors and the fairways for travel. You have several freeways that converge right there. Um, so there's a, many escape routes. And on top of that, there's the train station. Mm -hmm. that they're able to have alternative routes out. So there's many routes out of the city, but also something that's really interesting too is that between Disneyland, the Angel Stadium, the Honda Center, convention center. the Convention Center, a lot, of, a lot of the hotels and, and just the whole area, a lot of children due to Disneyland, all the other things and attractions around there and theme parks and the entertainment that's all through that area, um, it's caused a condensed... Um, really a condensed um almost like a uh, like a you know drug lord but sex trafficking lords in that area uh, connected to gangs but also just it, for people in that business yes and it's been condensed in that area and really maintained it and contained in that area but when the lockdown happened march you know first of this year we saw um, everything closed down. You know, I, I think one of the first things that we knew was getting serious is when Disneyland closed right. down. And everyone's like, Disneyland just closed down. And, and everything started falling like within hours after that, almost in one or two days, between Monday and Friday, everything shut down. And because everybody would, was immediately following that, asked to quarantine for 14 days, and then another, I think, 14 days after that, um, so almost for a full month, we were asked to almost force quarantine, stay in your homes unless you're going to the grocery store. Yeah. Um, what happened is because a lot of the trafficking industry that's fed through pornography and online, um, you, you saw the demand go way up in that time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the supply went way down because all of those places were closed. Mm -hmm. So now these trafficking circuits um, that were contained to one general area – are now going into the local communities mm. all around our area, your, your area's area. And really it's happening everywhere. It's not limited to Southern California. It's happening all over the country. And so if you're watching this out of state right now, don't think it's not happening in your state. Yeah. Talk to your local law enforcement because it's happening everywhere. California, Florida, Texas, top are, three states. Are the top three. Yeah. Um, and, and so what the director of the SWAT told me, he said, what we're seeing happen is these these traffickers are now going into grocery stores mainly. So your local grocery stores, the Targets, the Walmarts, places during the day because the husbands are at work or working at home and having to do their job. Yeah. And, and the wives that have the children are going to the grocery store to run the errands. Yeah. So it's a lot easier um, to, to uh, attack um, the vulnerable. Um, and to um, really prey on the weak. Yeah. And, and so they look for usually a single mom that has two to three children. And then what they'll start doing is they'll start shadowing you. And what we didn't know at the time, but we found out after the fact is that there's usually about five people that are all in this. There's usually two to three cars stationed at different areas around the building. Mm -hmm. And it's not just men, it's yeah. women we'll, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll share yeah. a story with you of something that we found out that will blow your mind about what's happening. Yeah. But um, what, what happens is they'll start shadowing the mom purposefully making their presence known to make the, the woman feel uncomfortable and move to a different part of the store. Yeah. And so they'll pick you up at one part of the store, but corral you is the term that 
that is used for law enforcement to talk about what they're doing. They actually corral you one or two people to the area then where they have planned to make the move. It's usually maybe where it's less um, occupied part of the store, usually a back exit door. Most grocery stores, places they have back exits, you know, um, simple, go through a double door and then out another door and you're outside. Yeah. And, um, and they'll have a car waiting there. And so what they'll do is one person will come and then that first person will approach Morgan. What we found out is that person will approach Morgan and do something, either sexually, you know, touch a child or, or make a physical altercation. And the purpose is to get into a physical altercation, a man with a woman knowing that he can't overpower her, but allows that physical altercation to take place. When the woman is in that physical alter altercation, the second guy that would be right around the corner, which that guy was right when Morgan left, he came out from the other aisle right around the corner, right by the exit. That man would then come around. And when you're either wrestling someone on the floor or fighting somebody, come around and grab one or two of the ki other kids as you're trying to protect one of them. Yep. Or he tries to grab one and you're pulling the one from him. The other person, when your hands are full with the one, then comes and grabs the other two or one that, that they're actually going after that um is that's just easy to grab and then you can't leave this child to that man to go after those kids yeah so you're really almost torn between making a decision will i which child am i going to pick at that point because mm -hmm. there's really no way when two people are coming after you know two to three children that you can hold on or keep all of them in your arms yeah. while this is happening and so we saw that it's happening a lot in the local <laughs> local communities now no not so much in these big areas but because of the demand being high and the supply being low um it's really infiltrating these areas and you know we just want to make you know people aware of that and i talked to some friends and say you know what? we've been so guilty of letting our kids kind of run around target you know or be on the be on the aisle next to us and we're looking at these toys and they're on the next aisle over looking at toys you know and not, not because we live in fear or that we ought to live in fear you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but the Bible also says not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Yeah. And these men are, are <laughs> demonic. What, what is happening is demonic. It's spawned from the pit of hell. It's, it's what Satan That's does best. Yeah. yeah, it's women too. And, um, and children too. They're using children, but we'll talk about that in a second. We'll share another story with you if we have time. But we um, just see uh, we, what we really found out is, the reality of it happening prevalent. Um, and like we said, over 10 moms, when Morgan shared that on Instagram, more than that, more than that a lot well, more than that. The thing too is like, I wasn't going to say anything because yeah. it was my mind. And yeah. it was something that the Lord was um, honestly working in my own heart. And, and just, I mean, he just did a lot through this, but, on when that hit me on Friday, I started seeing my friends' faces that I've run into at that Target. Mm -hmm. This is our; these are my friends in our community that mm -hmm. go to this Target, and I'm like, oh my goodness, if this is happening to me, this could happen to anybody. Yeah. And so I just felt like the Lord really wanted me to share that, and so I did. And over 15 mm -hmm. people in my in my community said that that same thing has happened at the same target yeah and it blew my mind and so i knew that <laughs> we needed to tell people well I, l let me bring up a, a couple of things you know one of the people that are on here too is sammy sumners from uh vegas and she was talking about obviously vegas is one of the big hot spots always has absolutely yeah. um you know you brought up when it comes to uh the the changes that have been with COVID-19, you know, pornography is on an all-time high right now yeah. in our world. And what pornography does is it, it destroys your mind. It destroys your heart. You know, I was watching something recently as well. It's like when you, uh, it was actually a, a girl that breaks down like crying things. And it's like the same kind of things. Pornography, where it plays this role. And it starts off with just regular men and girl and then sometimes it expands to different things and it gets gnarlier and gnarlier and gnarlier and then yeah. some of those that go to that level of children pornography we don't want to talk about it it just it disgusts me to even think about it but yeah. there's a huge world of industry that is out there 
when um, we, one of the interviews that Ryan and I did at the end of 2019, I was talking about it before you guys came on, was Opal Singleton. She too works with Riverside Sheriff's Department, but told some of the most craziest stories and the things that we were um, shared on air, but also off air that made my stomach curl. Yeah. Um, because I think for us, you know, you guys are a little bit younger than me, but a lot of us remember the, the movies, uh, the movie Taken. And the yeah. movie Taken was talked about like two girls, you know, young girls, like, you know, meeting guys and they get kind of like um, brought into this relationship, thinking they're going to have a, hard, uh, a good time. And then boom, they're like thrown into this sex trafficking ring. They're getting drugged up or whatever. Well, that's not just a movie. That, that's reality. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those things are happening. And like Sammy over there in Vegas has seen this. I remember her yeah. and Annie telling stories of, of freeing girls and still doing that. And I'm talking about teenage years or the early 20s before you know it. Um, some of them start off of like people online right now. They're like, hey, you're so beautiful. You want like a modeling contract? And they do photo shoots. And before you know it, they can get kidnapped. There was this yeah. one in particular story that I have not forgotten. And this goes into our kids and social media. Like, this is a big thing, too. Social media is a gateway. Yeah. Brandon, you talked about a second ago of, like, how these persons aren't working alone. There's, like, five people. And yeah. one thing that um, uh, Opal was saying, and the same thing the SWAT guy was probably saying the same thing, these guys, you know, we got to think in our minds, like, all these, like, these low-life thugs, like, they don't know anything. They're just, like, you know what? They're strategic. Yeah. And yeah. they look at children as a commodity of yeah. finances. These guys, these sex trafficking rings, one of the places was bust. They, he looks like a thug, but he has multiple escalades. He has ballin', has so much cash, so much money. Yeah. Because drugs, when you have an influx of drugs and you sell them, once you sell them, they're gone. But yeah. a child, they just continue using and yeah. using yeah. and using and using. And it's the hardness of man's heart. It's the evilness. And it is totally, totally demonic. Yeah. Um, we've seen this brought up, you know, and I've, I've said this before, too. You know, I don't want to get all crazy on politics and everything. But the reality of it is, like, this administration has spoken up so much when it comes to sex trafficking. And I think yeah. that's an amazing thing. Um, there are been many agencies that are saying those same things, whether they were for Trump or whether they weren't for Trump. They can't deny that things that are being in place, implemented, are helping them. But yeah. when we're talking about, you know, other, this is why we have to be so focused. We have to ha uh, bring awareness because it's reality. Yeah. yeah. It talks about like the aspect of grooming online. Um, and now I want to bring up something because you said something that people probably aren't aware of, and that is girls being involved. One thing that Opal said as well that when it came to getting girls caught up in sex trafficking actually girls were number one they would put they have caught girls being put into high schools actually almost like decoys they, they come in to register um but they befriend girls mm -hmm. and they, they go to maybe the girls that don't have much and it's like hey start hanging out with them get their nails done get their hair done get them a cell phone eventually build this relationship and before hey why don't you come over we're gonna go do this or whatever almost like that epstein thing where it's yeah. like these young girls that are getting brought in and then doing a massage for an old man before yeah. you know it they're helping out doing different things and then boom they're right into a a, a gang ms-13 is a gang that's huge um in our nation and same thing that they said they are strategic yeah. um and we have to be wise we don't want to live in fear but we have to be wise. Uh, tell this story that you guys were kind of hinting at a minute ago about the, the girl impact. Well, it actually was a child. Yeah. They used a child. So mm -hmm. when I when I posted that story on my um, newsfeed, I or not my wrong story. Yeah. Uh, wow, I'm, I guess I'm not as young as I think I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, this year on the internet, we did this thing with Dig. So anyways. <laughs> I posted that and then I had two people separate, don't know each other, say that they had this incident happen to them at Whole Foods in Fashion Island and another one in Newport Beach. And what they did was uh, they walked in and then there was this kid that doesn't have a parent 
near. Like they don't see the parent at all. And the kid keeps saying like, tag, you're it. Like, come play with me. And um, okay. you don't have to be afraid of me. I'm your friend. And Well, he, they, the mom didn't know he was saying that. So the boy started egging the other boy on. Yeah. Um, like walking well, by. One was a girl. One was a, one incident was with a my friend's daughter. And one incident was with my friend's son. Right. But they used a boy. Yeah. So the boy was about 10 years old. And um, the, the one that was instigating this. Um, and this 10-year-old boy walks up to the, you know, the one mom had a six-year-old boy with her. Yeah. at the store walks up to the boy and tags and says you're it and runs off and the mom said she thought like where is this kid's mom at like yeah. why isn't this why isn't like this child's parent watching him better and like he kind of peeks around the aisle and like he's kind of playing like egging the, the boy on walking back and he when he crosses another part of the store tags him again you're it and then runs off mm -hmm. i think for a boy especially you can only be tagged maybe two or three times before like i'm, I'm getting this guy yeah. back you know right and so finally, the boy started to engage with this other boy and started to kind of chase him around a little bit and, um, and started to play a little bit. And the mom kept calling him back and kept a pretty close eye on him, but he kept trying to get, like, play tag with him and lead him around the store as he would run away from him. Well, finally, the mom went to check out. And she, when she was checking out, um, she called her son back right away and he came and, and then the first thing the boy does, the six year boy, is he, he says to his mom, he says, mom, isn't it cool? That boy said he can drive and he wants to show me his car what? and it's right outside these doors right here. And so my friend looks at the cash register and they look at each other like, okay, this is not normal. This kid is like 10 years old. He can't drive obviously. And so they they carefully and quietly whisper, like, get security, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, the kid sees security well, the, approaching. Yeah, the cash register calls security. And right when security yeah. turns the corner, the boy recognizes security. Yeah. And turns around and hightails it out of the back doors of the store. He knew exactly where the back doors of the store were. Wow. The security guard chases after this 10-year-old boy. By the time the security guard gets out there, the boy's gone. Gone. This is Newport Beach? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Unreal. So, and, and two different, like Morgan said, two different moms, one with a daughter and one with a son. Um, both at two One was at Mother's and one was at Whole Foods. Both, both in, in Newport Beach. Um, and, and both shared their stories individually with Morgan, not knowing that that happened. It could have been the same way. It could have been somebody different. But what they're doing now is they're trafficking young children. And then they're training and conditioning these children to help them. And you know, you're because you're more prone to be like, Oh, hi, right. to a little kid than you are a, an adult, you know, or maybe have your guard down a lot, too. You know, it's it's just a kid, you know, what's a kid gonna do? Yeah, and you know, the, again, going back to how strategic so many of these people work, they look for weaknesses. You know, we look at, at the enemy in the Bible, it says that. The enemy walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I think for believers as Christians, as men, as women, we have to be alert. The Bible exhorts us to be alert, to be prepared, to be ready, because Satan is the, the king of distractions in every aspect, right? You want yeah. to just get us distracted from reading, from praying, from fulfilling the call of God in our own personal lives. But there's also application here where um, people get distracted a lot. I think all of us are guilty of that. You yeah. know, maybe checking out our phones, you know, checking this, whatever. Very easy to get distracted. People know that, and that's what they'll want to do uh, to yeah. distract us before you know it. it. It's heartbreaking. And, you know, people have seen the stats. There are 800,000 kids that are kidnapped every yeah. year, right? Yeah. In the United States of America. That's it. United States of yeah. America. Um, yeah. Also, you know, the sex trafficking is obviously huge in our nation. You brought it up here in, in California um, and many of the hot spots from, from Vegas and Nevada all the way to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't going away. What is something that I know you've learned, maybe some things that you would do differently, you're learning uh, during, during this, but how has the Lord been ministering to you? Because you've probably seen this influx in the last couple of weeks of the sex trafficking awareness stuff that's been out there more, this reality. Uh, what have you done to educate yourself with that kind of stuff? Or where is your heart being stirred at? I'll ask you that first, Morgan. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, like I said, it didn't really hit me till 
four days later, um, <laughs> late at night, like at 11-ish. Yeah. And I don't know if you heard like that whole Wayfair scandal, whether yeah. or not it was true or not. I mean, yeah. I, I would think that it is true. I, yeah. I don't put anything past these evil people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think reality set in for me, like that could have been one of my kids very very easily and i started to allow fear to take over my heart and my mind um and i i experienced my very i'll be very vulnerable i'm i'm a pastor's wife i've been a christian my whole life i i trust jesus with all my heart um but i experienced my first anxiety attack mm -hmm. um it was debilitating for me um i felt like um captive and like in my own mind and thoughts like I knew I needed to take my thoughts captive but it was almost like I allowed my fear just to to have a party mm -hmm. um in in my mind and so um I had I just went straight to Brennan and I just was apologizing that I wasn't like I didn't do the things that I should have done and and he was like Morgan don't let the enemy have a field day in your in your mind like mm -hmm. we need to take these things to the Lord first and foremost like our kids are safe and they're here because you know you got them out and God gave you that awareness and so and the Lord protected I had, us and the Lord protects us a hundred percent I give all glory to God mm -hmm. um but I I literally had to take those thoughts captive and yeah. I think it took like a couple of hours for me to even be able to calm down um, and we read, I just read scripture upon scripture upon scripture. Of, I just looked up scriptures on fear because I mm -hmm. knew that I needed to fight this battle spiritually and, um, that this was something that the enemy was trying to keep me afraid in. And so I just, I don't know, until about 3 a.m., I just had Brennan pray over me. I had my sister in law pray over me. Um, and I just read scriptures till I fell asleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what the Lord has shown me through all of this is that these kids are not my kids, that these kids are his kids mm -hmm. and that he's in control of their lives. And it, and it, it showed me that incident showed me, I, I used to, like I told Brennan, like I took our three kids to Disneyland by myself. Like I, I used to go everywhere by myself with our three kids and mm -hmm. Um, like, what does that prove? That doesn't prove anything. Like, okay, so you can do that. It really showed me that the Lord, the Lord is the one that was watching over them. And I knew in that incident that if something were to happen, I would not be able to save all three of my kids. Mm -hmm. And I, that was really humbling for me because, um, it was like, it was very eye-opening and mm -hmm. I feel like the Lord was showing me I, I I'm the one that's in control of your kids I'm the one that is faithful to protect you and I'm the one that has your best interest for you and your kids and I and I I had to wrestle with that and like really relinquish control mm -hmm. of my kids because yeah I was fearing like and I there was like, I didn't want to go to Target anymore. I didn't want to go anywhere by myself. And, and, you know, Brennan and I talked and we've, we've put some new rules in for us as a family. Like I, I'm not going to go to Target by myself with three kids anymore. That's just not because I don't think that I, I can't or that I can, but because it's just not wise for me to do that. I'm a Target. I have three kids and you know, they're kids. They're, they're not necessarily soldiers that are going to stand by me and obey every single rule that I have. Yeah. And so we've just decided like, we're always going to have another eye with us wherever we're at. If we go to Target, either Brennan and my mom, my sister-in-law, someone's going to come with us. If I go to Costco, same thing. There's, it's just something that I, we need to be wise and we need to be smart. Mm -hmm. We don't need to walk in fear. Um, but we do need to be wise. And I think just really practically for me what the lord has shown me really quickly is just one he's in control and that they're his kids two i don't need to walk in fear i can walk confidently because i know who my god is but at the same time i can be wise and 
set me up for success with these children that God has given to us, you know, to protect them. And then the last thing, like the, there's two verses that the Lord has just so, so um, just come alive for me in a new way. And if you've been walking with the Lord for any length of time, you probably know these. But one is Philippians 4 is just do not be anxious about anything, but in everything mm -hmm. with prayer and petition and make your request known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. And that's one of the verses that night that I just literally was praying over my kids, like for helping me to not be anxious, to let the Lord what I know what I need, and he's going to be faithful to do it. And then the next verse was just... Um, it's John 1, 5, and it says that the light shines through the darkness, mm. and the darkness can never extinguish it. As Christians, we are victorious because God is victorious. We're more than conquerors because God is the conqueror, mm. and we know that he wins. And so we can walk confidently as Christians because we know the light's going to shine brighter. And, it's, and even when it, it seems like you look around and you see – like, literally, I was paralyzed in fear. I didn't want to do anything. I literally was looking around like, this world is so dark. It's so evil. And the Lord gently just, he, he I, I was praying about starting a new book in my devotions. And he literally said, John, read John. And so I, I started opening John, John 1, 5. That hit me so hard. Mm -hmm. Was just, okay, the darkness can't extinguish the light, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And so those are the things that the Lord is just really, really, um, working and stirring in my heart and it's a daily reminder of just lord they're your kids and just give me the wisdom on how you want me to to, to raise them to be with them to protect them um and then just walking confidently in god but not in fear and that can be really trying as a parent and really um unsettling sometimes i think yeah. as a parent well, you know, I would say this, Morgan, and I would just echo some things that probably Brennan said to you is like, I, I think you did the wise thing. Everything as as you face that encounter, like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done this differently. No, like God has granted you wisdom of discernment. Number one, discernment. You're able to identify something that's wrong here. And then yeah. being able to make those moves, those things were able to impact you for not letting these kids get kidnapped. I've yeah. always looked at this. My wife, too, is like, Nicole, she has discernment, you know, so you're able to see like, and you have to trust that. I think for all yeah. of us, we have to trust that discernment where there's that yeah. mark. Why am I feeling uncomfortable about the situation yeah. and not deny it? It's not about being, oh, I don't want to be, um, you know, uh, fearful or anything like that. Like, no, you know, if there's an alarm, like the Holy Spirit, Pastor Raul will always say, it's like an alarm, somebody working in your heart. And it's just like, when you got a check mark, you don't feel peace, you feel uncomfortable bounce you know and i, and yeah. I did the, the the wise thing um you know from a, a husband's perspective uh brandon you're like me you love your children i love my children they're my my life my my wife it is everything to me um and for not being there there are thoughts that go through our minds oh man if i would have been there it would have been yeah. different. You, you think in the flesh too like i a punch the guy's mouth <laughs> you know all this kind of stuff but now your focus is obviously ministering to Morgan, making sure that she's cool, that she's okay. Yeah. Um, thankful that your children are okay. But what are some practical lessons um, that you have learned from this yeah. um, for your own family, but also that maybe insight for those that are watching? Well, I went and bought a new gun. There you go. <laughs> Me too. I, I don't mind. I don't mind going on radar. I'm a firm believer in the Second Amendment. Yeah. And uh, the right to bear arms and uh, to be able to protect yourself. And uh, so, kidding aside, uh, I, I love I love firing my weapons and um, <laughs> doing training. And I was actually in the desert today earlier today, doing some firearms training. Um, but um, in all seriousness, I don't I don't mind going by the grocery store on the way home from work anymore. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, it's the, I don't expect those things to be done. Mm. You know, I, I don't mind going to those places. And again, it's, it's you know, not just Target or just Walmart. It, it had a, happened at Whole Foods for another mom. It happened at another grocery store for another mom. It happens everywhere. And um, and so, you know, our role as, as parents are to be our children's protectors. And for for me, obviously, you know, you can't protect your children from everything in the world. You know, you have to keep them in a closet in order to do that. We want them to experience life and to have fun and, and to be able to do those things. But 
for us, we, we had a wake up call that we need to be on guard um, constantly whenever we are out. And even when we're home, you know, we've had our house broken into and we don't live in a bad area. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, we, we are on guard to protect our, our children, to protect our family mm-hmm. and, um, and having a greater awareness of that. Uh, and, and, you know, Morgan told me, she's like, I used to feel like, you know, I, I like, I was, I could prove that I was a super mom because I could go and accomplish these things while I had three kids. And she said to me recently, like, who do I have to prove something to? Like, I don't have anything to prove to anyone. Mm-hmm. And it's true. And, you know, we want to exercise wisdom. And so, like Morgan said, we made some practical protocols. Uh, you know, for me, yeah, there was some frustration. Um, and mostly to see my wife hurting, um, you know, and, you know, she went to a, a Costco on, I think that Friday and, and somebody that worked there had approached her or something on a car issue or something like that. And it caused Morgan to kind of go into that, you know, very first anxiety attack that she shared that she had, and she had to come home from that. And so seeing, seeing your wife and the person that you love the very most in the world hurting, you know, you want to go and regulate, you know, and, but the thing is, it can happen to anyone at any time. And it's just being aware of your surroundings. And Sean, I thought you said it best. And that's what I was going to say is don't ignore the discernment of the spirit. God gives discernment. Um, and that's something within you that wells up, you know, red flag, you know, you just, you can sense it, you know, something's not right here. That's what the Holy Spirit living in us and guiding us, giving us that discernment to be able to make the decision that we need to, to protect our family. And I think listening at whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, whoever you are, um, if you have children, even if you don't have children, and you're a single young lady and, you know, you're, you're out to not ignore the discernment. And a lot of times people are too embarrassed to make a scene. And, and, and for me, you know, encouraging Morgan, I said, from now on, like, make the biggest scene in the world. Mm-hmm. And if he ends up being a dad, then apologize later. You know, yeah, it's okay. like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, we're good now. Like, thank okay. you. I just want it's, it's better to be safe than sorry. And it's better to make someone else feel very uncomfortable than you being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's better to be proactive um, and then reactive when it comes to situations. Um, and so we've learned a lot, you know, through this circumstance. Um, you know, there's some great websites out there, a lot of great resources. You know, we've known about this for a long time. Uh, one of um, our first staff members at Regenerate Church that we hired was one of the, uh, the office directors of Orange County office for one of the leading sex trafficking organizations that are out there and so we've held things at our church seven years ago big awareness meetings so this isn't something that's you know it's right now it's very popular in in society and in culture right now it's and it's being made more aware which is really important i think that's really good but um this isn't something that's new this has been happening um but now the world is understanding it in a greater way and like you said, through pornography, um, that's creating a demand mm-hmm. um, for for a, a greater demand. The demand's always been there, but the demand is going through the roof because of those things. Yeah. Um, because now after watching something for so many times, it's not doing it for you anymore. And now you want to act out these perverted from the pit of hell fantasies. And that's where the demand for children come into play. And so, you know, we just need to use wisdom. Again, we don't, you know, for me, the Lord's been gracious. Um, you know, it, it didn't bother me um, a, as much as it could have. Um, you know, I, I was bothered more when our house was broken into and actually, you know, our garage was ransacked. And mm-hmm. I woke up on a Sunday morning to go to church and everything was just totally t- like that made me feel like victimized yeah. with our children being home safe. I felt OK that, you know, by the grace of God, that our family's safe. So I didn't feel that I needed to attack or find somebody and hunt somebody down. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I know that there's a lot of parents that aren't as fortunate, you know, that, you know, 800,000 children in our nation. And a lot of times with the movie Taken and things like that, you know, oh, if, if teenagers go to a foreign country, then it happens, you know, in Indonesia or somewhere. But in the United States is one of the leading I, and I, I don't know if it's first or in one of the top, I, I forget, but it's at the very top of the um, supply chain mm-hmm. for sex trafficked children. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, 
you know, just to be aware of that, I think it's so important to be wise and to make decisions that are going to protect your family and, and do I those think things. too, like, like we said, like some practical things, if you have more than three kids, like I would say have someone go with you or ask your husband or a aunt or somebody to stay home with one of the kids or something. Don't take all of them. That's something practically that we've decided. Mm -hmm. Also too, like I know us moms, especially grocery shopping or if you're like me at target and you have like the um, target app and you're scanning all your items to see if you're saving money yeah. huh? um do that before you go don't be on your phone um that's they look for distracted moms yeah. um or a distracted person who's with kids um they also another thing that we decided to is just um you know to talk to our kids a little bit about it mm -hmm. um our oldest son is seven years old and he he can tell you everything about that guy even more than i could um he was bothered by that and he said mommy i don't want to be taken by somebody i don't want to be kidnapped mm -hmm. um so we we kind of explained a little bit we say we don't go into detail obviously because our kids are young and we want them to stay innocent and we want them to, to enjoy the to childhood. enjoy life um but what what i say to them is that you know what you guys there's people in this world that don't know jesus mm -hmm. that don't love jesus that don't have jesus in their hearts and they want to harm children mm -hmm. And they want to take you away from your mommy and daddy because they don't love you and they don't love God. And they don't want us to ever be able to see you again. And I said, so, you know, and I explained to them, so when we're out in public, wherever we're at, that's why it's super important that you listen to mommy and daddy the first time. And like, yeah. I explained to them, I was very proud of them for listening to me the very first time on a toy aisle, mm -hmm. um, which again, that's only the faithfulness of God. Yeah. Um, but I, I explained that to them. And I that's think awesome. that living in this day and age, like our kids need to know that there are people out there that do want to harm them. And that mommy and daddy or grandma and grandpa or whoever you've allowed your child to be with um, has your best yeah. in mind and and loves you and yeah. so that's why you need to listen it's not because we don't want you to have fun or you know whatever but those are some practical things that we have done and then yeah. obviously if you're a christian you should be praying for protection over your family yeah, absolutely. and I mean, praying yeah. for yeah for wisdom so amazing i i just realized something right now the instagram says 15 seconds and it's going to close <laughs> we did the whole i've never done the whole thing but an hour like this, so it's amazing. Thank you guys so much. We'll do something again. I love you okay. guys so much. Everybody that tuned in, you thank too. you so much. Yeah, be aware of you praying for this nation, praying for the yeah. kids, protect your family.